I like to think that it's more along the lines that like they told him all these like safety precautions he has to do to not spoil anything and he like stopped them. He's like, I've been in Spider-Man movies before. I've been in blockbusters. I know the deal. And then he didn't because <laughs> it's such a different beast than it was when he was Spider-Man. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Nala. And I'm Faith. And this is The Siren's Den, a fandom podcast where we talk all things movies, TV, and pop culture to our heart's content. On today's show, we have the lovely actress and cosmetologist, Jodie Lynn Richardson. Hi. Welcome aboard. Thank you guys for having me. I'm super excited about talking and just venting and getting all fandom. Yes. Got a lot to look forward to this upcoming year. Hopefully it'll treat us better than the last one. Oh, I sure hope so. The, the bar is low. There's... <laughs> it's significantly low, so that way our hopes can be very high. <laughs> Let's get to the news first. In TV news, um, Marvel has recently confirmed that Oscar Isaac has been officially cast as Moon Knight, which is very, very exciting. What do y'all think of that? I love Oscar. I, oof. I'm pretty pumped for that because Oscar Isaac has this really particular brand of deranged um, in his acting and his characters that I think is going to work perfectly for Moon Knight. Uh, I, I and I think completely it's just agree. A, uh, and yeah, it's just a role that I see him having a really good time just having fun with. It's just, it's giving him permission to be like, have have all the fun in the world, uh, which is always just fun to see from an actor. And I think we'll be able to bring some serious life into the character. I was going to say, talk about range. Yes. That man can play basically any character. So essentially, Moon Knight is going to be playing all these different characters. That's kind of part of his thing. And I think Oscar is going to be amazing. And it's exciting because I remember back before Doctor Strange came out, they were like, maybe Oscar Isaac's going to be Stephen Strange. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. But obviously that never came to fruition. So I'm glad he finally gets his uh, his time to shine. I think it'll be really good. I'm, ex- I'm really excited to see how the movie turns out. And hopefully they can execute it properly, which I'm really hopeful that they will. Mm-hmm. I believe it's going to be a show, but these characters are definitely that. moving into uh, films. Yeah. And I will say that I think Moon Knight does make more sense as a show Marvel wise than a movie because so Disney, I think it's been cool watching them now that they have all these Fox properties kind of allow themselves to put out more adult entertainment. Um, Deadpool being the big one, which we'll get to that. We'll talk about that. But I think (laughs) in terms of there's there's not a lot of R rated superheroes uh deadpool is definitely the big one but uh moon knight is definitely on that list uh and i don't think that disney quite wants to jump that fully into (laughs) it um just because moon knight is a big step away from uh captain america robert downey jr uh and all that so i think it makes sense that they're doing it as a tv show because it's it, it, it will allow them to kind of tell a little bit more of that darker story um, and have a little bit more fun with that. Um, but also it's just, it's a little bit safer in terms of kind of branching out into more R-rated Marvel Universe content. Because especially it's uh, Marvel Universe, it's their cinematic universe, which up till now has been pretty consistently PG-13 tone. Right. So I'm going to be, it, like, I'm I'm very intrigued to see just that like the tone that they're going with um because obviously moon knight's following is very mature because he is a very mature character for those of you don't know uh moon knight's uh story is as he lay dying specter was approached by the egyptian moon god khonshu who offered him a second chance at life in exchange for becoming his avatar on earth as a result specter was resurrected and given superhuman abilities now, basically, it's like, um, you know, someone who's possessed. He's a man possessed, literally. And it's that inner struggle, um, like fighting his own demons and fighting his like physical real demons as well. So I'm 
intrigued to see if they're going like how they're going to bring all this comedy that Moon Knight is also known for into a really kind of grim story. Whereas, you know, the, yeah, like you said, the rest of Marvel's brand is light and family friendly. So it's going to be fun. So, yeah, he's not so much a hero as much as he is a vigilante. He was a former Marine named Mark Spector, and then he became Moon Knight. But he struggles with disassociative, disassociative identity disorder. And Feige wants to make sure, wants to assure the fans that uh, the mental health side of Moon Knight's character will be a big part in the Disney Plus series. So I'm excited to see that finally be brought to light. I'm glad these, you know, topics are being discussed more and more in mainstream media. It was supposed to start filming in November of 2020, and they were going to film in Atlanta, but due to, you know, coronavirus, they slowed everything down and shut everything down. So obviously it'll be a later date for sure in 2022. Mm -hmm. If that's something I do think is going to be interesting, kind of related to that note, um, because Moon Knight one of the many productions that had to be put on hold due to coronavirus. Um, but a lot of them started coming back around the same time. So I'm pretty sure at some point this year, we're just going to have another day like we did back in November when Disney announced all their things, where just all these projects that have been on backlog and on pause have like gotten to a place where they can have a release date. And it's all going to happen at once. Oh, for and sure. So and that, it's going to be overwhelming. That day is coming in 2021. Oh, I 100% believe it. And it's going to be super overwhelming, but it's also going to be really exciting and give us all something to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. I'm, whenever that happens, I'm pretty pumped. All right. Well, speaking of Moon Knights, we have some new Star Wars news from the gaming universe. Oh, yeah. I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty pumped for what's coming. So Lucasfilm is now branching off into Lucasfilm games. They're going to start kind making of. kind of. Uh, so basically, so Lucasfilm games uh, have has been kind of a thing for a while. They've mainly been partnered with EA up until now, though. Uh, yeah, basically all the Star Wars games that have come out since the new Star Wars games have been coming out. Lucasfilm Games has had an exclusive partnership with EA Games, which a lot of people have hated for uh, a lot of for a lot of reasons. But uh, this one is notable because it's going to be from Ubisoft, um, Ubisoft being the developer behind the Assassin's Creed series, um, most notably. Uh, so and Ubisoft is not only doing it, uh, they're not they're not only giving it to uh, or Lucasfilm isn't only giving it to Ubisoft. Um, Ubisoft is also giving it to like their main publisher, like their uh, I think it's Magna. It's uh, it's it's their it's their it's a studio in Sweden, but it's gonna be a big open world Star Wars game, which. It's going to be an open world Star Wars game, guys. I'm super excited. See, I love the... I Okay, I will admit, I was a huge fan of the Battlefront games. That's fair. Those, I, I rock, like, I had the original Xbox and would just rock out on the original Battlefront games. But I can understand the problem that people had with uh, the games that were developed by EA. But I'm super stoked for an open world Jedi uh, I'm sorry, an open world Star Wars game because listen, <laughs> I will spend hours on it. Customizing your character alone. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. I and especially just because Ubisoft has been doing really, at least in terms of open world, really solid op open worlds lately. Um, I've been sinking myself into Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the one that just came out. Uh, which, if it has any mechanics like an Assassin's Creed game, like that, that would work so well. Uh, I could. I okay, I would but like, like to see that. What if we blended it in with Assassin's Creed? Assassin's Creed Jedi like Listen. they have those like <laughs> they have the, the little wrist <laughs> daggers but are little tiny lightsabers okay but my the favorite Jedi thing already to do look like assassins. The, my true. favorite thing to do in Assassin's Creed for some reason hate on me if you want was just scaling buildings yes like oh, I, and... I understand <laughs> That's all I'm I do. so glad just scaling the tallest building in the game like that that was just my ultimate goal for some reason it was just my favorite pastime that's yeah no I understand that it's because the climbing mechanic 
I love a good climbing mechanic. Uh, that's also yes. like Assassin's Creed. I can climb forever. Uh, Breath of the Wild. I can climb forever. Uh, <laughs> another Ubisoft game that is pretty recent. That's an open world. That's awesome. Immortals Phoenix Rising. I've spent so much time just climbing to the top of like whatever mountain <laughs> and just uh, gliding down. That's all I've been doing. Uh, so if uh, we want good climbing mechanics from uh, open world star wars i think is yes the <laughs> I, I think i think that's fair i think that's something that they can definitely get give us and if not scaling buildings at least jumping on top of really high buildings yeah oh i'm so curious what they're gonna do with uh the the power-up system yes what is that gonna look like it's there's a lot of possibilities that they can do there uh i'm also really curious if they're gonna do kind of a more um well, because there's a lot of things that they can do. So I think I think in terms of how this open world goes, it's going to be a, you're probably going to be a Jedi. I, I would be shocked if there was some sort of, are you going to be a Jedi or are you going to be, because there's going to be a central character. It's going to be, it's going to be about this person. But I, I'm really curious to see, because usually a good open world game has a lot of mechanics to make different builds, depending on what your play style is. Do you want to be a little more kind of a tanky behemoth of a character? Do you want to be a sniper? Do you want to have more of a magic base? So I'm really curious to see what they're going to do to kind of fill in those aspects. And there's also a lot of Star Wars aspects that don't traditionally go into an open world game, or at least... A, have roles that you don't really get to do as much in an open world. Um, although I guess for like Star Wars flying mechanics, it could probably play like how being on the boat in Assassin's Creed plays uh, or any of that. So um, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm really curious to see how they're going to, how to build this, but there's so much possibilities for what they can do to make something really unique uh, and interesting to the Star Wars universe. I was just going to kind of emphasize on customizing the avatars. My favorite, I will say, my favorite Jedi in Star Wars is Ayla Sakura. Ooh. She, I don't know, there's just something about her that I've always loved. And like, I'm hoping for the avatar customization, like you can take little bits of each Jedi and make it like your own, as opposed to just playing as one Jedi and just being like Luke Skywalker or being like just the original characters. Yeah. And the, that also kind of brings up another good point because one of the, I think one of the appeals of Star Wars is how many awesome alien races they are. Like uh, Ayla, she's a Twi'lek. And I, I would love to play as a Twi'lek. Are you kidding me? I know. <laughs> so I wonder if there's going to be a species option, but I, I don't think there would be, but we can hope. I was going to say in my ideal world, you could, yeah, customize it to the race, your lightsaber color, even to, I think it would be awesome if you could play like bounty hunters. Yeah. yeah. Like how cool would it be to be a Mandalorian and design your own little Mandalorian costume? Like, oh, that'd be sick. I, I would kill for an open world. If they, that, how interesting would that be though, if they chose Mandalorian instead of Jedi? I would, I would, I would lose it. That'd be so cool. <laughs> because there's nothing stopping you from getting a lightsaber anyway. True. I mean, point made. Point. You don't yes. have to be a Jedi or force sensitive to wield a white lightsaber. We know this. <laughs> uh, well, whatever they end up doing. Um, another thing I'm excited to see is just the the worlds. I'm excited to see what new worlds they introduce. Because, like, I I don't think they're going to be sticking to the same old planets mm -hmm. they're gonna really bring out the stops in you know like graphics wise and being able to explore you know all this skyrim maybe it'll be something right. where you just have a bunch of side quests that you can do and just really chill out yeah or follow the main story plus there's so many good worlds in star wars that we want to see in the game i want to i want to go in court i want to go to coruscant what <laughs> and i also want to go to tatooine uh like, tatooine. i want to yes uh you can actually go to the tachi station and pick up power converters really live out that fantasy if you wanted to i mean i'd be all about it i just i just want to hang out with some jawas man i want to do I'm... jawas side quests oh my god the side quests, guys imagine all the side quests 
I yes. think the options are endless for them. They could really take this to a whole nother level. Uh, because that's my other th- favorite thing about a good open world is a good open world with a good, a good side quests. Yes. Um, and honestly, if they want to go extra with it, they could platform it for virtual reality game sets. Whoa. Ooh. That would be that would, that would be quite something. Some broken TVs. No, I'm just kidding. Most likely. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll talk more about it when it, you know, when more news surfaces from it. But all of this is really exciting. And I'm excited to see where it goes. Moving on to our last tidbit of news. Uh Marvel has announced that Deadpool 3 will be moving forward as a rated R movie, completely in the MCU, which is a huge sigh of relief for people Mm -hmm. who were always, you know, worried about Deadpool dying as soon as it got to Disney. Oh, gosh, I can understand that. But the fact that they're going to make it rated R, I think is reassuring that we still keep that Deadpool humor along with the story just kind of flowing along with the character that is Deadpool. Exactly. And I think Marvel's realizing now that even the kids, like I watched the first Avengers as like a teenager and now obviously I'm old enough for rated R movies, but the kids who are really into Avengers are becoming teenagers now and, you know, are able to see more mature content. And I think Disney's realizing that now with again, going back to Moon Knight and these other kind of darker things and themes that they're playing with. Uh, I'm just excited for good old raunchy Deadpool. Um, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I'm stoked for Domino. She is yeah. my favorite. I love her. I love Zazie Beats. I think it's going to be awesome. And another thing that this opens up is Deadpool and Spider-Man. Oh. I think that Ryan Reynolds and Tom Holland would have great chemistry. Oh, yeah. They yeah. will make some really good... Uh, content and just really good um, scene play definitely and it kind of also goes what we were because we talked a little bit last time about how we're there marvel is absolutely going the multiverse um and deadpool as a character and especially being the deadpool that is kind of crossing over from the previous company is such a perfect way to kind of play with that multiverse idea and get him into that un- and get him into the cinematic universe. Honestly, um, that think- could yeah, that could be a way to introduce I mean, they have so many outlets of introducing the mutants, but that's definitely a way. D- like they're definitely going to talk about the buyout. They're going to be meta about that. Mhm. Yeah. And I think it's also on that note, yeah, it's going to give them a really nice vehicle to kind of address any kind of like wonkiness or weird transitions while that all is happening. I think Deadpool's definitely the perfect bridge for all this, like you said, multiverse stuff, because um, if stuff with Spider-Man 3 is going on and, and being confirmed, I don't think they've confirmed Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. They haven't yet. But hopefully that's where it's going because I think, you know, DC does not shy away from having, you know, multiple Flashes and multiple Batmans and Superman. Mm-hmm. So oh, right. I think yeah, definitely. That's, that's where you go with Marvel comics because the comics are also in every witch universe. So I'm glad that they're finally like, ah, it doesn't all have to be linear. Let's, <laughs> let's switch it up a little bit. Actually, uh, it turns out that Tobey Maguire might have unintentionally revealed his role in Spider-Man 3 by going to uh, the same place that they're getting the wardrobes for the film and and having a wardrobe fitting. So he tried to be sneaky about it, but he got caught. To be fair, he he was sort of a reckless (laughs) Spider-Man. I I I won't disagree with you. I like to think that it's more along the lines that, like, they told him all these, like, safety precautions he has to do to not spoil anything, and he, like, stopped them. He's like, I've been in Spider-Man movies before. I've been in blockbusters. I know the deal. And then he didn't because <laughs> it's such a different beast than it was when he was Spider-Man 20 years ago. Yeah, like, the internet wasn't as popping. No, definitely not. So I'm sure he wasn't expecting somebody to be waiting, seeing what his every move was just to get the scoop. 
But now we have it, Toby. We see you and we will see you in the movie. I mean, I'm wondering if they're going to maybe bring Deadpool into the Spider-Man movie. Like, it seems like they're setting up for another type of civil war, but it's really just another Avengers movie, like big cast, all this like fandom geekdom stuff happening, like Alfred Molina returning as Doc Ock. Like it's going to be awesome. And Mm -hmm. I think they should bring Deadpool into the mess. I think he would fit perfectly in there and really work well off of not one, not two, but three Spider-Mans. But see, you might also have those people that are skeptical saying that we need a separate movie as opposed to just one big one. You know, I do. I, I, and I get I get where that comes from. Uh, I think I do think if they go into the multiverse route and do get all the original ones, there is definitely going to be the, oh, they're just trying to appeal for the fans and <laughs> fan service. But like, that's the whole point of Marvel movies, man, is it's, it's fan service. It's always been fan service. It's at its best when it's fan service. (laughs) Exactly. It's mindless entertainment. There's a pandemic. Let me have my three Spider-Mans. That's how I see it. (laughs) When you bring something into live action, like you're not supposed to create completely new content. You're supposed to create the content that's already there. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, as far as content goes, I think Deadpool has its work kind of cut out for it with, like every all these changes that are going on it's really they're kind of not really wiping the slate clean but starting from you know they're just basically starting in on a new path and i i'm excited to see how deadpool fits into this ever expanding world that they're creating mm-hmm. um in terms of what we would want to see in deadpool the next deadpool coming up because I'm, I'm, i don't really have too many expectations for it i'm kind of in the you guys made two great movies. I liked the first one a little better than the second one, but just keep doing what you guys have been doing. Don't change your formula. It's working. But at the same time, I I do want to see them, how they incorporate that into Disney because that is going to be really interesting to see. I think Deadpool will be really good. I mean, just, just my opinion personally, anything Ryan Reynolds puts work into, he just nails it. And any movie that he really gets really into always comes out just I don't know he just overachieves his characters and I think he definitely has set that bar for Deadpool and I don't think he's planning on going away from that oh he definitely does Deadpool justice like he brought it back oh Oh, yeah to make fans happy but again for me I just want to see more Domino I hope she has uh, a bigger role in this one because the last one is very much about like Deadpool and Cable yeah. And I was like, I need I need more Domino. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm gunning for in Deadpool 3. If Deadpool 3, if the, the three main characters are Deadpool, Lady Death, and Domino, oof, that yes. would be some good. Fabulous. So another theory that I've seen floating around that I would absolutely love is if they brought in Lady Death. Morena Bakran's character, Deadpool's girlfriend, who kind of got fridged in... The second one, which was a huge bummer, Um, but if they go with a Lady Death storyline, she could definitely come back. I mean, she's got that whole, you know, black hair with a white streak. I think they're maybe alluding to that in some way. I never even put Mm -hmm. that together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She would be perfect for Lady Death. Yeah. That would be such a delicious role for her, Um, especially just because, like... She's been so underused in the movies. Like she's been, she was great in the first one, but still didn't really do that much. And then the second one, they fridged her immediately. So it would really be cool to see like her character, who is really good, get that opportunity, but also just her as an actress. Absolutely. And I think if they go with the video game version of Lady Death with like that um, Sugar Skull design, that would be. Oh, incredible. She's already rocked amazing dresses as Inara in Firefly. Like she could definitely pull off a lot. Oh, yeah. A lot of dope Mm -hmm. costumes. I mean, she's definitely Um, hot. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So she's essentially death. And she was someone that I wish they introduced early on in the Marvel Universe. I was expecting her to be introduced with Thanos as, you know, courting death. 
when they, you know, referenced that in the Avengers, that's what people were um, hyped up for. And obviously that didn't come to fruition, um, but now they can totally do it. And since Thanos is gone, he is technically, he he's with death and that could kind of drive Deadpool crazy because um, he was trying to die to get back to her. And she kind of like she consulted him from the beyond. So like she's got she they might be alluding to the fact that she's got them powers. And that's uh, like how seductive she is. I'm excited that 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 would be an awesome route for Deadpool because it would kind of humble him in a way in terms of powers like that is his one weakness. And I think it'd be really funny because the same guy that plays Thanos plays Cable. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> exactly so he could yeah he'll, he'll, he'd probably take it out on poor josh brolin oh poor guy about to feel the wrath of deadpool yeah and it would also make sense if they go a little bit more in that route and that they've been planning something like that just because one of the things that's made the deadpool movies work so well is the fact that ryan reynolds was a big super deadpool mega nerd before making the movies uh so it would make sense that he would know about those storylines and have something big like that planned i'm sure he already has it planned in the back of his mind and he's probably hoping to bring that storyline to light it's just whether or not you know they'll let him do it i hope they do our news topic let's move on to our main topic which which is a sequel from our last episode looking back at 2020 and the content that came out that really helped us through so now we're looking ahead into 2021 and the stuff that's coming out that's getting us excited for this new year oh yeah i'm super excited yeah there's It was really funny making a list of this because I went in kind of like, oh, there's really nothing I'm excited about. And then I (laughs) thought about it for a minute and I was like, oh, no, I am hyped for so many things. You know, I really I didn't know exactly what was going to start coming out in 2021. I only knew of a couple. But then, you know, I started looking into some of the movies that they have coming out in 2021 or so they hope to come out in 2021. And I was like, wait a second. Second. Yep. Well, uh, then let's get started. Jody, what is something you're excited for? Um, God. So I'm a huge, I'm sure you guys know the movies, um, the Kingsman movies. Mm-hmm. Yes. So they're coming out with one called The King's Man. And mm-hmm. it's going to be the, the story that leads to the beginning of The Kingsman. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm super, super I'm super excited about it because I love the Kingsman movies. I'm a huge Taron Egerton fan. Like if he's single, hit me up. But <laughs> <laughs> um, but I digress. The King's Man, I saw the trailers um I'm gonna <laughs> say really early 2020 or um really late 2019. I saw the trailers for it, but it never released. And I'm assuming I never really looked into it because I was really busy at the time and I was really hoping to go and see it in theaters. But so I worked across the street from a movie theater and they had the sign up for it. And I was so stoked. I was like ready to go see it and then came to work one day and the sign was gone. But I Yay. saw that it's going to start coming out, that it's going to come out in 2021. And so I'm super stoked for it. Absolutely. I also am a big Kingsman fan. I saw the first movie multiple times. I oh. just loved it. The whole cast, yeah. fantastic. Um, I'm super excited for um, Ray Fiennes. Just like all these really quality actors, especially uh, Gemma Arterton, who mm-hmm. was, I first saw her in Prince of Persia as Princess Tamina, and I oh, loved her. So I'm definitely excited to see her in some some great like action. Like, oh, yeah. Hopefully better utilized than she was in Prince of Persia, but... Yeah, I'm excited to see the 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 story be explained a little more. I think it'll give me more appreciation for the second and or for the subsequent Kingsman films. Oh yeah, I'm really excited to see how they put the story together and just some of the cast that they have for it. Liam Neeson's in it, and I'm just ex- 
excited. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, Liam Neeson's gonna be in it, and amazing. Obviously, he is the goat of like, uh, he is just an all time just icon. Stanley Tucci, love him. You want to talk about range? That man has range. Uh, and I think one thing I'm pretty excited for, kind of on the note of the action, is the fact that it is a period piece. It is. It's yes. early 1900s. It's. I know. I know Rasputin is a character, uh, but yeah, it's gonna be because Kingsman is, as a series is really good at just really solid action sequences, like just really, they really well are. shot. That that church scene in the first one is still one of my favorite action sequences. Yeah, so I'm really excited to see what these action sequences are going to look like when with tech with the period technology. These these aren't aren't just going to be like the the spy thriller gun sequences that we got previously. These are going to be they're going to be a little more vintage, uh, and they're they're going to have a lot of opportunity to really play around and be creative with uh, a lot of like weapons and technology we don't see it anymore. And you know the action sequences. I'm just going to touch on. In my opinion, did you guys ever watch the, I'm sure you did, the, sh- the first Sherlock Holmes movie with Robert Downey Jr.? Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Those action sequences in Kingsman remind me so much of the way Sherlock Holmes fights in that movie. I was, I was going to make that parallel too. I was going to say what he does in the Sherlock Holmes movies, there's a lot of like fast slow motion. Fast yes. slow motion. And I think that would be really awesome with old technology because it's so, you know, a, a little haywire. Sometimes it works too well. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. And I think that is going to be, yeah, I think if they do it the way they did it in Sherlock Holmes, which is kind of also a period piece, but still modern with its depiction of action would be a, a delight to see. Oh, I think it'll be beautiful. Just beautiful. I'm a sucker for a good action sequence. Heck yeah. I'm glad you brought up the King's Man because that was, I'm on the same page with you, Faith, where I'm like, oh, wait, a lot's coming out that I'm excited <laughs> for. So that's that's definitely one of them, too. What are you stoked for, Faith? Again, there, it was it was so hard being able to narrow it down to just three things that I'm excited for. for. Uh, but there is a, there's a lot of anime that's coming out this year that I am pumped for. Uh, one of those being uh, Demon Slayer Mugen Train, the, uh, the return of the hit popular, or the hit popular, those mean the same things. The return of the <laughs> hit series Demon Slayer. Granted, it is the movie that is returning, not necessarily it's not coming. It's not going to be season two. Uh, we don't know when season two is coming out. However, it is interesting as a movie because it is actually it, it's going to be canon. It's they're taking the dream t- train arc of the Demon Slayer manga, and that's what they're making the movie. So it still is a continuation of the series. I have never seen Demon Slayer, but I have seen stuff from it, and I I love the costumes and I love the character designs. I should definitely check it out. Yeah, uh, we were just talking about things that just have really solid action sequences. Uh, the d- action in Demon Slayer, they they are really interesting in the fact that they really take advantage of using kind of more CGI animation for their fight sequences, which if you told me that a year ago, or not a year ago, uh, but if you told me that a while ago, I would have been like, oh God, not the CGI, but they, they really know how to do it in a way that uh, makes it like doesn't take you out of it um and just it makes it they they really take advantage uh of using like the space and the cinematography that uh cgi animation allows for um and it's just a really beautiful wonderfully done show so i'm really excited to see what the animation looks like when they have that movie budget jody have you seen demon slayer or know no, anything my, about it my best friend is so like a huge fan of it and she has been telling me over and over and over to watch it and hearing you talk about it faith just makes me think all right i need to give in and just watch it yeah um it's i i highly recommend it it's and it it's definitely one of those shows that you you started out and you're like oh yeah this is just kind of a a normal normal shonen anime whatever um and then and then and then it hooks you it just so 
a little bit of a premise of what Demon Slayer is about. It is about a young boy in Japan whose uh, family is murdered by demons, uh, which are basically vampires. They they kind of act in the same way of vampires, except for his youngest sister, uh, who has been transformed into a demon herself. Uh, the Demon Slayer Corps comes to kill his sister because she's a demon. He says, no, she's my sister, and sets off on a quest to cure her of her demonness. Um, and ends up joining the Demon Slayer Corps himself. He goes around and um, just fights demons wherever he goes. Uh, and also, I think he's really interesting as a protagonist because there's so many action protagonists that are just like loudmouth and like like I'm gonna fight every. But he's actually a lot more. He's a lot more subdued. He's not one a character who's really itching for a fight, and he has just so much empathy for just everyone he comes across, including the really monstrous demons that he fights because he recognizes that they were human once upon a time um, and he sees their humanity even at the end. And it's just, he's, it's a really good show. The characters are really good. The animation is some of the best animation and fight animation you will see in anime. Um, and if nothing else, like give it, like episode 19 has one of the best anime action sequences that I have ever seen in my life. And if nothing else, if you're not sold on it yet, uh, look up the theme song on Spotify. It is Garen <laughs> by Lisa. It is one of the best anime openings to happen in the past five years. You'll love it. It is such a jam. Everybody should watch Demon Slayer. So that way they can be excited for the Demon Slayer Mugen Train movie that, granted, it has already premiered in Japan, but that U.S. release date is coming really soon. So for me, something that I'm excited for that's coming out soon is the 10th anniversary re-release of the Scott Pilgrim game on the Nintendo Switch. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. They're going to be providing some new DLC characters, like you can actually play as Wallace, his roommate. Uh, you can also play as Knives Chow. Love me, Knives. Um but I'm excited for just the comic book coming to life because they're doing the same kind of 8-bit animation and just that unique design of the Scott Pilgrim comics in a game. And it's going to be fun. Yeah. Technically, uh, they're 16-bit, not 8-bit. So something that is really interesting to me about just this era of video games that we're in is that we're already starting to get lost video games. Uh, and I know Scott Pilgrim was considered one of those for a while just because there was nothing that you could play it on. So the fact that it's coming back to the Switch is really, really cool. Yeah, it'll be released uh, tomorrow on January 14th. So it's going to be a little old news by the time this episode hits. But there you go. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim versus the world, the complete 10th anniversary edition my older brothers definitely loved it and i would play it with them every now and then they would let me play but every now and then but i would love to see how the gameplay is now how it will be it seems like they've remastered it to kind of run a little more smoothly um on the new switch platform i need to invest me in the switch because i started playing my little brother's uh switch and I was playing Mario Kart, and I got addicted. <laughs> oh, Mario Kart is so good. <laughs> uh, I've recently been playing Smash, uh, and it uh, seems like yep. Scott Pilgrim is going to be that type of, you know, brawling game. I haven't played the original, but I am a big fan of the movie, um, so I'm excited to see. You know, I haven't read the comics either, but I'd like to see that that little animated section side of Scott Pilgrim. How awesome would, or how funny would it be, and awesome, but mainly funny, would it be if Scott Pilgrim was the next Smash character? Yes. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim joins us. See, I love me some Smash now. If it is anything like, like, if that's how they decide to format it, like, I'm, I'm about it. Well, we'll find out uh, with the, as the reviews start pouring in, I guess. So, Jody, what else are you excited for? Um, let's see. Okay, I was really confused whenever I was looking, because I haven't heard anything about it. Um, maybe it's just because I live under a rock. But um, I saw that they were releasing a new Suicide Squad. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Somebody explain that to me. I need to know. Give me the deets. The okay, Suicide so Squad. 
do you re do you do you remember when um uh what what's his butt was fired from Guardians of the Galaxy? Yes. Uh, so basically he was fired from Guardian for the Galaxy, which I think everyone agrees for very silly reasons. And then uh DC went, hey James Gunn, uh we have this uh film franchise that uh has a lot of uh level of characters that need some new direction, and uh you you nail that style. Uh and it would be a really good uh F you to your former employers. Do you want this? And he went, heck yes, I do. Um, and then Disney was like, We actually do want you for Guardians 3. And he was like, Cool, but I'm doing this first because you fired me. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna uh I there's there's so many characters, there's so many people involved in this. Um uh, a while ago, I was actually on one of our uh, our sibling shows, Losing It Podcast, where we were uh, speculating which characters in the movie we thought were going to live or die, and just kind of going over the mad, the in, in, insane amount of characters that are going to be in that. Uh, if I was on my old computer, I could actually bring up the list of uh, characters we predicted were going to live and die, but I do not have that with me. But there's it's it's bringing back most of the people from the old one and then just a bunch of new people i know um, i'm looking at the cast list right now and tell me it's pete, insane pete davidson pete mm -hmm. davidson yep i think he's gonna I, I think we said he was gonna be one of the first to die uh, <laughs> yeah it seems like because of the huge roster they're going to do like what they did in deadpool with x-force they're like yeah hype it hype it hype it just kidding they're expendable this isn't the actual suicide squad right mm -hmm. uh john um, cena is one of them peacemaker yeah. Yeah. yeah and apparently he's going to be having his own show his own peacemaker show interesting i would be even funnier if they killed him off in the movie <laughs> <laughs> I love that, you know, everyone, you know, when, when John Cena was announced as Peacemaker, they went and did all these photoshopped images of what his character design could be like, modernized, you know, make it a little sleeker, a little cooler. Uh, and he was like, no, we're going to do straight up from the comic book with my insane silver helmet. That's fine. And then you have <laughs> Polka Dot Man, like it's... It's going to be a lot. It's going to be a really fun ride. Uh, but I'm personally excited for just more Harley Quinn costumes. Oh, yeah. As... Margot Robbie has my heart. Fabulous. She really does. I love her. I thought, you know, Birds of Prey was one of the last things I saw last year. And, ooh, still a good movie. One of See, I, I, I never saw yeah. it. I saw the previews <gasps> for it, and I was a little bit turned off. I'm not going to lie. Um, oh, but I... and I did not hear very good reviews about it. Okay, so so the good the pe reason you didn't hear good reviews about it is because men are salty because mm -hmm. this bad. I hear that, that girl because that movie all that movie was was just cathartic breaking perverts kneecaps the movie. It was um <laughs> it was just it it was and the thing is it didn't. It didn't have like a big complicated plot because it didn't need it. It was this little mm -hmm. girl stole a thing. Harley Quinn find the little girl. That was the plot. Um, but uh, just it was a really they. But because the plot was so simple, all these great characters had amazing chances to get to shine. Um, uh, Ewan, or, or Ewan McGregor as the villain in that was Ooh. delicious. That and you could tell that that was just a role he was having fun with. Um, he did play a character was... that was very ew in McGregor. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, there, there was one scene in there that, uh, like, just to credit the the direction of that movie was so good because not only did they uh, really uh, it was gloriously over the top, the action in it was so clean and perfect and specific. Um, the it had the same action choreographer as the John Wick movies. And there's an interview with him, the, that choreographer, not specifically about Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey, but he was saying that like one of his biggest uh, problems with how a lot of action sequences go down is that they don't understand women because a lot of action sequences he watches, the women are fighting like they are beefy seven foot men. And that's just not how you would fight. Um, right. and he, he uh, And he was talking how it would be a lot of just 
using your opponent's weight against them. And that's what a lot of that movie was. It was a lot of broken kneecaps. It was mm -hmm. a lot of action that you don't see that much because, again, a lot of movies don't understand women and how that would fight would look, go down. So just you had these really awesome, beautifully shot fights. Um, you, she's on roller skates at one point. They acknowledge that... She, they don't know how she got on it. It doesn't fucking matter. But it's just, <laughs> it's such a, it's such a satis. It's a, it's an action movie made for women. It is an action movie made for women, specifically for women who felt like alienated by the genre. Uh, it's. I'm definitely going to have to give this a watch because yeah. I will say I was turned off by it just from what I've read and just from the few little snippets that I saw. But if it has that great of a storyline and if it does just kind of show like how women can actually just mm -hmm. like take over then I'm ooh, yeah. I need to watch this with the with the direction um just why that movie was done like the the director there there's one scene in that movie where there is a woman and she does kind of get sexual assaulted but it is done in a way that it does not glorify it at all we don't it is not titillating in any way it is uh Again, it kind of just goes back to it was it's a movie made by women for women and just with topics like that, it is from a woman's point of view. And I've never seen that in a movie. And that was the first time I saw it done that way. And I think that was just really notable and really well done. And I'll shut up about Suicide Squad. I'm talking too much about it. <laughs> or Harley <laughs> Quinn and the Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Love it, it was it was an extra title for an extra movie. I yeah, I echo what Faith said. It was one of the best choreographed action sequences I've seen because of how they use not only not only how they use their opponents weight against them, like Faith said, but how they use their surroundings like they would just be scaling you know, if they could scale a wall, they would scale it and like use that as momentum and leverage and the costumes to die for. I really think you would. It's it's a movie that you don't need to think about as a movie. It's just a fun ride. They yeah. literally end at an amusement park, and you're like, "Yep, this was this was a roller coaster," and I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny with the costumes because that's another th p thing people had a problem with is that they're like Harley Quinn isn't skimpy enough, as if her outfits in that movie weren't the hottest thing on the planet. <laughs> Well, you've sold me on the outfits. Yeah, I, so the outfits. That the whole reason why I'll watch it is because of the outfits. That's exactly why I'll watch it. No, but getting back to uh, the Suicide Squad, yeah, it's. Uh, I've seen set photos. I guess they're going to allude to the Joker, but I don't think he's really going to be in it, which I'm very thankful for. Um, but I think Harley's definitely going to get her time to shine um, even more in this one, and I hope they continue to bring out her character just like uh they did for birds of prey so that's I'm that's excited a, for it great movie to be excited for um so the next thing that i'm excited for is it is a sequel to one of my favorite video games um it's been years and years and years and years in the making and this is finally the year we're gonna get it probably it's psychonauts 2 so Psychonauts, uh, it was just a, it was a really just charming, charming little game. Uh, the, essentially the plot is in it is that you are, it's, it's a summer camp. It is a U.S. government remote summer camp uh, in disguise as just a normal summer camp. And it's teaching children who have psychic powers to use their psychic powers for the government. Thing, things obviously go haywire. Um, and it was just it was such a tongue-in-cheek fun game. It was very cartoony. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the uh, the studio Double Fine. They're also notable for uh, the Adventures of Monkey Island video game. Uh, oh, I love okay. Monkey Island. Yeah. yeah, they they're they just and they also did the that metal game with I think it was Jack Black. Um, I forget mm -hmm. the name of it, but it was really fun. But um, yeah, we're finally getting we're finally getting the second one. Actually, in fact, today it was just announced that the final script was done and that the final lines have been recorded. Hell yeah! Where is uh, it going to be launched? Uh, that is that is a good question. To my knowledge, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be everywhere because the original Psychonauts right now it's it came out on the God it was the original Xbox I think. Uh, 
that's how old i mean that's how old this game is uh <laughs> but psychonauts 2 uh i because i i'm willing to bet it's gonna be on um everything although it is uh it's being developed by xbox game studios so it might be xbox exclusive uh, no, I just looked it up. It's releasing on everything. It's releasing on the Windows. It's releasing on Mac, Linux, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the Xbox Series XS. So um, unfortunately for us Switch users, we're not going to be able to get Psychonauts, which whatever. Uh, that would be cool. But um, but yeah. Well, you that sounds like a dope game. So I'll see if I can find some way to play it. I'm always a fan of like the government facility, like, oh, everything's normal, but it's really not kind of plot line. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely one of those dark it's it's a very dark humor based game. Um there's there's one one of my favorite moments in that there's this like kind of dopey kid who uh who's at the summer camp, uh, but he has horrifying psychic powers. And so the first time you see him, he's arguing with a squirrel, and then you walk away and you hear an exploding sound. <laughs> And then you come back oh, and he's no. like, that squirrel's not going to bother me anymore. Uh, and then if you want to play the original Psychonauts, it is apparently, uh, it, it's it's on Steam um, if you have a Steam account. I do. So I will definitely check that out. For me, it's kind of, uh, I'm kind of cheating a little bit. Uh, one of the things I'm excited for in 2021 is WandaVision that is coming out oh, later this week yeah. as we record this. So... I'm not like it, it's it's a little like it'll pass by the time this episode releases. So I'm excited for WandaVision. We're obviously going to be doing some episodes on that, uh, which I'm excited for. But I'm also excited for all of the Marvel shows that are premiering this year. It's it's long overdue. And I wish this stuff could have been done, you know, while we were mainly stuck in quarantine last year. But <laughs> I'm excited for, you know, what this year brings I've seen the, the previews shows. and the trailers for WandaVision, and ultimately, it just looks like it's so well done. I love how everything is, it almost seems period, but obviously it's not, and everything's yeah. just kind of like harmoniously chaotic, Yeah, if that makes sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, it is technically a period piece. They basically go into different TV show formats from each of the decades, um, and since she is derived from, or at least in the MCU, she's derived from the reality stone. Chaos is is very much a part of that. Um, so I'm I'm excited for. I think period pieces are coming back in full swing recently, and WandaVision is definitely going to be like up in that like showcase of of the old time of the old days. I love so I'm it. excited I'm for the production design. Yeah. Oh oh yeah, I'm super excited for that. Mm hmm. Uh, so Nala, uh, specifically, uh, what do you think you are most excited to see in, uh, WandaVision? Well, like I said, I think it's interesting that Vision, you know, isn't alive in it. And this is just her creating it, creating him, creating this world. Um, I know that another Captain Marvel is going to be in it, Monica Rambeau, which I'm super excited to see. Um, because mm -hmm. then that will tie into the even larger Captain Marvel 2. And then, you know, Miss Marvel's coming out as well. All of it is going to like, I'm excited to have those seeds planted and see how they pay off in the future. The Easter eggs are going to be a lot. <laughs> but I'm I'm curious, out of what out of what out of WandaVision makes it the out of all the Marvel shows, uh, the one that you're most excited for? For me, like I said, uh, it's the uh, the production design. I'm I I want to see how it all works because this is something that we have to fully suspend our disbelief for because we obviously know the truth. And so I'm excited for all these questions to be answered. Like, you know, why is she jumping around to all these eras? I'm also excited to see the you know OG Scarlet Witch costume, some OG villain or uh, um, some OG Vision costumes in there as well. Just kind of to pay homage to the comic book um, and to see what doors it opens because she's going to be in the multiverse of madness. Um, but does that mean that she, you know, and, and, and characters are going to be in Captain Marvel? Like maybe she's opening some sort of rift um, to potentially bring in more characters, i.e. mutants. That would be really cool. 
as we talked about it last time with House of M, if they go that route, that would be super awesome to see. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also, I love how the, the costume, her, the, the one that's kind of a callback to her comic costume. It also just looks like a vintage fifties, like Halloween outfit. Yes. But love, Uh, love. That's, it's just such a good detail and it, it really, it brings that outfit to life. So excited to see it. Um, they're going to be doing obviously week by week releases. So it's not going to be bingeable, but it'll definitely give us something to look forward to every week. I wonder if every episode is going to take place in another time period. There's a lot they can do with that. Oh, also speaking of WandaVision. A weird happen coincidence happenstance is we we're we're gonna be doing uh WandaVision minisodes every week to uh talk about each episode. Uh just just so happen happen to be doing that. <laughs> what a coincidence. I know. It just so it just so happened to be something that we're talking about. <laughs> huh. Well, Jody, round us out. What uh what's the final thing you're excited for? Or one of the final things you're excited for this upcoming year? See, with my theatrical musical theater background, um, they are doing a new Cinderella. And I just have to put this out there. Ah, yeah. I am, uh, I, am, I am interested to see how they do with it because the girl playing Cinderella is Camilla, Cab- or Camilla Cabello. And I will be really interested to see how she portrays Cinderella. She has a beautiful voice, beautiful singing voice, but um, yeah. I am interested to see how her acting is. So that's my little thing. And then also they're doing a West Side Story, which I'm super stoked about. So that's oh, just yeah, a that little. Coming out this year. Yeah, that's just a little musical theater input for me because um, musical theater fanatic over here. So I'm excited to see. It. I was gonna, you know talk about how oh my god there's already been a live action cinderella blah 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 but it wasn't a musical and while it was a beautiful movie with beautiful costumes i really did want that musical aspect because the cinderella musical um with whitney houston as the fairy godmother yeah rogers and hemmerstein's cinderella was a fantastic movie if that's what they're doing i'm very excited i'm Mm -hmm. really excited to see what they do with it whenever i saw that she was the leading Cinderella. Um, I mean, it is a musical, so I'm I'm curious to see what they do with it. Just from her aspect as a singer, um, I just I don't know. I know that some of the people that have been a part of producing it is uh, James Corden, and I'm a huge oh, James Corden fan. He is very talented, but I just you know I'm I'm curious. That that's all that's all I can really say about it is that I'm curious to see how it goes. Yeah. Um, and it'll be nice because I think the last big movie musical was Cats. So <laughs> <Well>. it'll be <laughs> um, so it'll be nice to go back to uh, musical or musical movies that aren't a just fever dream from hell. Yeah, I, I uh, can totally see that. I guess since both of those involve James Corden, I will technically that's right and wrong. Um, if you've seen, there is a. Uh, a movie on Netflix called The Prom that is based Ooh, off of I've a heard musical. Of it. I've heard so of it. So it's not as much as a of a trash fire as Cats. Um, it's it's a, it's a cute little movie that I would recommend checking out. It also has James Corden in it because he's in everything. Do you know when it's uh, coming out? February fifth. Ooh. Oh wow, that's yeah. soon. Yeah. It, it's coming up. Well, I'll probably be checking that out. Um, especially if it's uh coming out on a. a Streaming surface that I don't have to go to a movie theater. <laughs> I think that's what everything's coming out on for the most part right now. Well, dope. Hopefully they can release it to us staying at home so we can enjoy some musical goodness. All right. So All right, my well, my last one is, and I think by putting it on here, it's, it's committing myself to actually watching it. <laughs> um, so it is, uh, I don't, do you guys know who Junji Ito is? Yep. I'm going to be honest and say no. Uh, so Junji Ito, he is a manga artist. He is specifically a horror man- manga artist. And he uh, he's just known for making just n- absolute nightmare fuel. Um, all his work, it is, it is so well crafted and just beautifully detailed. Uh, but it's horrifying. I have... I, 
I can't stop reading it. And I, it gives me nightmares and it like, there's things I haven't read in years that I like, I still think about some panels that he has in that manga, but, um, he is getting one of his most famous works. It is a work called Uzumaki and it is getting a four episode mini series on adult swim. It is the, uh, I think it's the fourth time Cartoon Network as just a network, uh, has actively been involved in the production of an anime. Um, so, and it is going to be premiering, I think, exclusively on Adult Swim. It's probably going to branch out from other places there, but it's going to be an Adult Swim show, uh, four episodes. Uh, and it is being directed by Hiroshi Nagahama, who <laughs> directed one of my favorite anime uh, called Mushi- uh, I- anime called uh, Mushishi uh, that was just really environmental and beautiful. And granted, it wasn't a horror, although it had some horrifying elements. It's coming to Cartoon Network. I I don't know if I want to watch it because that the the manga that it's based off of is truly disturbing. It is truly horrifying and in in the best of ways. Um, but I'm a baby, and I See, don't know I'm if intrigued. I can handle it live action or not I'm live intrigued. action. It has been I'm like. Action. Let's see but, if you can scare me. I am intrigued. I want. I, I'll. I'll watch it for sure. And like the the premise of it doesn't sound when that horrifying. Trust it, it's it's a nightmare. It is about a small town in Japan that slowly becomes obsessed with the concept of a spiral. Hmm. A spiral. Uh yeah. So basically, it's uh yeah. This it that that's what the monster is. Is it is the concept of a spiral. It's it, that sounds weird. Um, uh, to give you an idea of how it can get a little bit gruesome, though, um, and people who are uh, uh, one, there's one character who becomes she's becomes obsessed with spirals, and then she becomes truly fearful and wants to purge herself of spirals. Um, guess what shape your ear ears in? What? Um, a spiral? Yeah. No. Um, no. No. It can't be. No way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hold up. Now I'm looking at my ear. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, it is. Um, I I highly recommend just like the manga if you're looking for just or any any of his works, really, if you just want some good horror. Um, but Uzumaki specifically, it is such a it is such a well done psychological like eldritch horror. I'm in, I'm intrigued. I, I like me a good mm-hmm. horror. Uh, and it's also going to be nice because uh, Junji Ito, he has had his work adapted before. Um, Uzumaki, what we're talking about right now, it had a really bad live action movie. Oh, no. uh, and then uh, a little bit more recently, there was an anime that came out that was the Junji Ito collection. It was just a bunch of animated of his uh, kind of shorter stories because he does a lot of short horror stories. Uh, and it it wasn't it wasn't great. It was... Uh, because a lot of what makes Junji Ito so powerful is just how much detail is put into the art and absolutely none of that effort got transferred over. And it looks like they actually are putting in the effort into making sure that like his art and his style and just that detail that he gets to is being translated in. Okay. Yeah, I've seen uh, Junji Ito's stuff and I've always sent a shiver down my spine every time. So I'm also a baby and I'm not going to probably watch this but maybe someday i'll i'll gather up the courage because this looks terrifying okay oh, <laughs> ladies and it's it's funny too because you like watch interviews and stuff with jinji ito and he's such a sweet goofy man he makes nightmares he makes he i i've been using that word a lot but it's um, he obviously has he, like a different side to him yeah. Um and he just but he under he he's someone who really understands how to make a good horror and he understands what makes something horrifying. Uh so yeah, Uzumaki it is premiering at some point in 2021. I think I want to say fall and this is just my way of getting committing myself to actually watching it. <laughs> By talking about it. Well, we'll we'll hold you up to that. One of the final things that I'm excited for this upcoming year is the new Disney movie, Raya and the Last Dragon. Oh, yeah. And I'm all about it. Um, yeah, I'm here for it. Um, plus dragons, like you can't, it, it, it doesn't get better. And, you know, Kelly Marie Tran is going to be Raya, which mm-hmm. is 
I'm I'm so happy for her. I'm glad that she's getting, you know, more work. And um, I, I believe, I'm not sure there's not that many people like credited from what I'm seeing, but Aquafina is also in it. I believe she's playing the dragon. Ooh. See, I love Aquafina. And obviously, you know, she's got that iconic voice. Oh, yeah. Um, so the plot is that long ago in the fantasy world of Kum- Kumandra, humans and dragons live together in harmony. However, when sinister monsters from known as the Drun threaten the land, dragons sacrifice themselves to save humanity. Now, 500 years later, those same monsters have returned. It is up to one lone warrior to track down the last dragon. So... A good quest movie. Always exciting. And it's coming out March 5th. Um, I'm assuming that they're going to be releasing this like they did Soul on Disney Plus. Uh, maybe in theaters. I really mm-hmm. hope they don't do a paywall again. Uh, I, I think I think that the Mulan thing was enough of a bust that they, they are not going to try it again. But we, we hope... Just because I really don't want to give streaming companies the precedent of I'm already paying you this much money and I'm going to pay you $30 to watch (laughs) one thing. I agree. It it was a little ridiculous. So I'm excited for the... I'm not sure if they're doing songs. I didn't really hear any songs in the uh, trailer. Hopefully they are. I I love me a good Disney musical. And since Aquafina is, you know, known as a rapper... It would be Ooh. awesome to have some rapping songs in in a Disney soundtrack. A dragon I would love rapping. To get some Aquafina. On, yeah. Uh, her her music is so amazing. A rapping uh, dragon is definitely Disney to me, and I think it'll be yeah. included. So I'm excited to see what 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 comes from it. It's going to be awesome, and you know, obviously, just having yet another Disney princess to be another role model for young children. And see, always I feel like Disney just always, always, there's just something about the recent Disney movies, probably tracking back to whenever they release Moana. I cry. I cry. I'm going to oh, say yeah. it and I will it's admit gonna to it. It's going to be a tear fest. And I will, I will definitely cry. I cried in Brave. I cried at Moana. I cried in Soul. I cried at Inside Out. Like, I will cry during this movie. They know how to tug at those heartstrings. They really do. <laughs> and they're good at it. They really are. Huh? Uh, honorable mentions for me are uh, the Black Widow movie that's hopefully going to be premiering maybe later this year, maybe when everything starts to open up again. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to see the, the Black Widow movie in theaters because that's what she deserves. Jody, what honorable mentions you oh, got? Sorry. Uh, I will say Corella, the new Corella movie coming out. I think ah. Emma Stone's going to kill it and I'm excited yeah. to see what she does with it. I don't know how great it's going to be, but I'm excited. Absolutely. I'm excited for uh, Bleach, the final season. Uh, the final arc of Bleach is getting animated, uh, even though it didn't end fantastically. It's uh, it's nice that they're going to be getting that nice send-off. Uh, Seven Deadly Sins is ending, which is going to be cool. We're getting a Shaman King anime. We're getting a World Ends With You anime. We're getting the f- fourth and final movie of the Neon Genesis Evangelion tetralogy. Neon Genesis Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0. Last Attack on Titans. I already talked about Beastars. I already talked about Cells at Work. There's there's so much anime. Fruits Basket final season. That time I got turned into a spider, which was a light novel, and it's going to become an anime about a girl who gets turned into a spider and kind of a um, battle royale event. Uh, there's Anyway, that's, that's the anime honorable mentions corner. Thank you. And that rounds out our main topic for this episode. Huge thank you to Jody Lynn for being here with us. Oh, stop. Thank you guys for having me. This has been so much fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you have uh, anything coming up? Anything you want to plug? Um, I will go ahead and plug this. I recently started a music video by a band called Plastic. The song's called All Stand Up. The music is such a good vibe and the guys were amazingly talented and the production crew definitely deserves their recognition because they or we worked so hard it's a narrative type of music video and we just had so much fun doing it very grungy action vibes so uh go on youtube and give the music video a watch or find the song on spotify it's called all stand up by plastic and then i guess i'll shamelessly plug my instagram follow me at 
Jody Lynn Richardson on Instagram. And yeah. I think that was the most professional plug we've ever had on yeah. the show. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jody you. means Thank business. You. Heck yes, I do. I'm trying. <laughs> Well, you can comment and like our videos on our Facebook page. And if you want to send us any letters or emails, you can at the at Sirens Den Podcast at gmail.com. Thank you to Ty, our producer. Thank you to Sean Thomas at BuzzStudios.com. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.